Hey there, what's going on? We are super pumped to be here with you today for another episode of the Beach Boss Influencer Show. My name's Carrie Hyam. I'm Adrian Lindeen. I'm Fran Loebscher. And I'm Brandy Shaver. And we're the Beaches here at Beach Boss Influencers, and we're shy one. Kat is on vacation. So we're taking this over for her today. So in network marketing, it's common for people to switch companies. And let us know wherever, depending on where you're watching this, comment and let us know if you've ever switched companies. Um, maybe you're looking at switching companies now. This video today is going to be very beneficial for you. And this episode is going to be very beneficial for you. So, you know, there's a lot of different reasons that people will switch companies inside network marketing. I mean, it can be compensation plan changes, um, leadership you know, leaders, they have rifts and, you know, some decide to leave companies go under, like the list can go on and on and on. And you may be asking yourself, is it time for me to make a switch? Well, in this video, we'll be going over the do's and don'ts to be aware of when it comes to switching companies so that you can keep momentum in your team. And more importantly than that, keep your integrity so that you're looked at as a leader and a professional in the industry. And make sure to smash that follow button so you can stay up to date with the latest and best network marketing hacks and strategies to grow your business using social media. So let's dive into it. Um, Beaches, what are some things to consider when switching or making the switch to a different company inside network marketing? Yeah, that's a great question because, you know, especially right now, um, if you are in network marketing, you're seeing like a lot of stuff happening right now on social media, right? And so if, you know, you are one that's sitting there, maybe you're evaluating where you're at in your business um, and things are just, uh, you know, maybe you just don't have a good feeling, you know, you've been thinking about this a lot, but I hope that, you know, after today's episode, we can give you some real good do's and don'ts because a lot of times people make emotional decisions and then they end up right back in the same kind of spot, you know, after that whole like honeymoon phase wears off and they get into the new company, right? So um, let's talk first about evaluating the new opportunity thoroughly because when you are making a transition, this is kind of your time to like press the reset button and really do it right. And so we want to give you a couple of things to keep an eye out for when you're evaluating, you know, is this going to be a good move for me? Or is this other place going to be a good move for me? So the first thing that we recommend is researching the new company, um, you know, understanding its market position, the kind of products um, and service and the quality of it, you know, um, is it something that can generate you monthly customers? Because there's a lot of different companies out there some are consumables and some are not right so you got to think about those things when it comes to your revenue the compensation plan um you know what is its potential in growth over the next you know however many years what have they already done um that's kind of the first thing there another thing would be is to kind of look at the company's like stability um you know look into its financial health i know something you know that we to look at it is has it passed that first five years of where it goes through like those growing pains and it's still strong, right? Like what's its leadership team um, and kind of what is the track record in the industry uh, for that company? Another thing is to compare its compensation plans, right? So you want to ensure that like new companies offer a more favorable um, and more equal compensation structure compared to maybe the one that you're in. So maybe you're in, you know, a, uh, um, shoot, what's it called? I, I know it's with the two. What's the term? Binary. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you're in a binary and you see another opportunity with, you know, um, not a binary structure, right? Take a look at that bit. You just kind of want to keep an eye out and make sure that there's not all these gotchas um, inside that compensation plan uh, that really is a win-win for not just you, but for people that you bring in and, you know, um, into your team. And the last thing I'll, I want to uh, touch on is, you know, what is the company's team system? Um, you know, you want to make sure that, again, like I said, this is your, your chance to reset. 
Um, you want to make sure that the company has a system of how you're going to be able to market your products and market your business opportunity that it feels good and congruent um, with how you want to build your business and kind of what that looks like is, you know, are they still teaching you to like spam, right? All over social media. Are they still teaching you to kind of send cold messages like right out of the gate to people you don't even know? Or are they even teaching you like, oh, just, we still want you to invite people into your home for home parties to me, right? With where we're at in 2024 in network marketing, uh, that seems to me to be something that I already did years and years ago. And our industry has definitely developed, especially now that we have social media, right? So just some things to think about, um, is it have a system for you to plug people in and get your business from where you are now to where you want to be. And you feel good again about building that business. So. And I think the second thing that you always want to be careful of and you want to make sure that you do is is be a professional. Um, when it comes to when it comes to the company that you're in right now, make sure that you understand all the T's and C's and everything that you've signed because you signed a document when you enrolled and make sure you go through that and see if there are any is there anything that you have to do or that you can't, you know, Make sure that you understand all the legal ins and outs of the document that you sign. Okay, um, do you need to do you need to give them you know notice? Do you need to let them know? I would let them know. Like I'm I'm leaving. That I'm you know I'm 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 resigning my whatever you call it my distributorship. I'm resigning my distributorship and let them know. Okay, that is the first thing. Um, and then. You want to be able to, you want to communicate with your downline. Now, the thing that you need to be careful here with is that you don't actually own your downline. Okay. So it is having a, having a conversation. It's not like you can go to your entire downline and say, Hey, this is where I'm going. Come along with me. A lot of them probably will because they joined you. They didn't join the company. Okay. So a lot of them probably will join, will come with you. And this is probably going to be having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with, with each one of them. I, that's what I would do. And that's what I did previously is having a one-to-one -one conversation with each one and saying, look, this is what I've done. This is why I've done it. This is where I'm going. And I'm not putting any pressure on you either way. I would, I love you. I would love you to come and work with me. But if this is, if you want to stay where you're at, I will love you and you know you you it is entirely your decision to stay to go wherever you want to go you cannot put any pressure on any of them to come and join you because you do not own your downline you don't own your own your customer base you don't own anything which is why it's so important to to grow an email list so that so that you can actually let people know and you're not you know you can let people know what you're doing um via email okay but be transparent with the company that you're with and with your team that you that you have enrolled, um, you know, as to what you're doing and your customers, too, and let them know. And perhaps, you know, you're still going to support the customers who love the products and want to carry on buying the product and say, absolutely, keep buying the products. You know, you can you can still be using the products from your previous company. Um, but just please remember that you can't bank on just like literally bringing your entire team across because you don't own them. Yeah. So the next piece is to plan your transition very carefully. So you don't want to just like, like Adrian said, um, you know, make decisions emotionally from, um, you know, maybe there was something that went on or, um, you know, different things, the reason you're leaving that company. Um, just plan your transition very carefully and think about it all the way through, right? Develop a strategy and create a detailed plan for transitioning your business, including like timelines and milestones. Um, if you, you're planning on leaving that team there, which is probably the most ethical thing to do, right, is to not recruit from your other team and move over. Of course, like Fran said, people are going to still come with you, but you want to have a plan for transitioning, right? This isn't, this isn't for the faint of heart is kind of what I'm getting at, especially if you have a large team. You've got to have a plan and like, you know, get that going. Then you want to maintain the momentum. So keep your team motivated and engaged throughout the transition to avoid disruptions in their performance. And when we actually moved from one company to the other, um, we, we could recruit our own personal recruits. That was the rules, right? But there's different rules depending on different companies. So you're going to have to like dig into your rule kind of thing. 
But um, a lot of our team came with us and a lot of our team did not. But if you keep your team motivated and engaged throughout the transition and, and avoid disruptions in their performance, it really makes it um, seamless as it goes. And then to maintain relationships is really important here because you're going to have people in your team that love where they're at, right? You want to respect existing contacts. Um, you want to avoid like getting in any disagreements with, you know, your former company or its representatives and maintain that professional demeanor. Now, I'm not saying that it's going to be a smooth move, right? There's a lot of uh, top leaders when they move companies, you know, they've got lawsuits that come upon them. They've got all this stuff. But you've got to work through that piece by piece, right? You can't be stuck in a company just because they're going to try to, you know, take you through legal action, right? You've got to do what feels aligned with you. So it's just working through those. And then leverage your network skills. So using your network to build relationships in the new company and gain support from the existing members. And I think it's important here to keep that integrity intact. You don't you know, like we said before, you don't want to just be stealing your downlines downline and like, you know, bringing them over. In fact, um, I have a story about this where I moved and my down, one of my downline did not move from the company and they, I had some of their downline ca contact me to move over to the new company, but I was very, you know, very gracious. I said, Hey, you know what? I love that you want to, you know, you want to work with me. I love this, but we can't necessarily just leave you know, X, Y, and Z out of the process, right? They're building over here and I suggested they stay, you know, all of those things. You just want to push them back to where they, where they came from because you don't want to be known as the poacher. It's very hard to get rid of that um, reputation once you've gotten it. So respect where they're at, respect, you know, have conversations and always put the people first is kind of where I would, you know, work mm -hmm. on when you're moving. So- yeah, and that actually uh, brings me to a good point before we move on to the don'ts, but it is to stay ethical, stay ethical mm -hmm. and compliant throughout the process or the transition. And this is something that SBJs are huge on is the integrity piece and the ethical and compliant piece. Um, and if you haven't noticed, there's like a lot of shady shit going on on uh, social media right now with a lot of movements and, you know, some companies who have changed their, um, you know, their structure, their compensation structure. And so there are a lot of moves happening. Um, and actually you might be in this position right now, not because of your choosing, um, like you just had no idea that maybe the company you're away from, it's just a challenge, right? They still little switch your real. So we just want to make sure that you are ethical and compliant so that no one can come after you later and you're not trying to deal with this stuff. Um, so follow all the legal guidelines, right, that you there are. You know, you want to ensure that, you know, you're compliant with any non-competes. Actually look at that in your, you know, in the company when you sign that thing. See what it says, the clauses or any kind of like uh, company contractual obligations um, from your previous company. And um, respect confidential information. So if you didn't create your team system, leave it there, right? If you, if, uh, and same goes with like your uh, client's information, right? Or, or any of that. But if you created whatever you created for your team, absolutely, that is yours. Um, but whatever, you know, company produced for you, leave it there, move on to the next. There's no reason to kind of take information with you. I just kind of create more of a headache. So, yeah. So, depending on where you're listening, maybe you're watching on YouTube, wherever you're watching this from right now, let us know, you know, what your biggest takeaway is from, I guess, this first piece of our conversation, which is like the do's and what you do want to focus on. Because now we're going to be transitioning into the don'ts. And there are a lot of don'ts that are happening right now on social media, in the industry. And it's like, Maybe, maybe it's ignorance. People don't realize they're doing it. And that's the whole reason that we're doing this episode of the Beach Boss Influencer Show, because ignorance can literally come and bite you in the ass. Like it's going to be the quickest thing that's going to do it. And knowledge is power. And when you know better, you do better. And so let's talk about some of these don'ts and the don'ts when it comes to switching network marketing companies. And I'll lead with the first one 
my biggest don't is don't burn bridges. You know, anytime people leave and switch companies, there's always, uh, what's the word? I, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm maintaining a, a posture about it. You know, there's just, there's, there's people that are very slimy. There's people that are shady. There's people that hold grudges and you'll see passive aggressive posts between, you know, that's what I was going to say. Passive aggressive, <laughs> passive aggressive stuff. Like we're like, Oh, this person left this person's team. And now this person's bashing what that person's doing. And this person is bashing what that person's doing. And you know what? People don't want drama. They love to watch it. They don't love to be involved in it. And if they, if they see like all this negativity that's coming from you, whether it's towards somebody that's left your team or, you know, you bashing people that you've left, people don't want to join that, right? They don't want to be involved in that. So do not, you know, criticize your previous company. Don't pre criticize your previous upline, regardless of what they've done to you, be the bigger person. And when you can be the bigger per person and hold your posture, you know, and, and be positive about where you're going and like, just keep your sights that way. That's what people, that's what people want to follow, right? That's the people that pe that's the leader people want to follow. And the next thing I would say, and we've talked about this a lot in the do's, but also in the don'ts is make sure you preserve professionalism. So maintain those positive relationships with your former colleagues and those leaders safeguard your reputation that way. And not only that, but I don't know how many times I've seen it where someone will leave someone's company and then they circle back, right? They realize the grass wasn't greener on the other side. And so they circle back and they want to come back, but they're not going to circle back to you if you were an ass when <laughs> they left your company, <laughs> right? <laughs> so make sure that you're you talk positively about everyone, regardless of your experience. I mean, you can talk, you can share, you know, what happened, but the second you start emotionally charging comments and start your being passive aggressive, it, it's, it looks really bad on you, not yeah. the person that you're talking bad about. Yeah. Cool. The next piece is don't neglect your due diligence. And I know a lot of people, this is like a huge red flag for a lot of people, because I've even done this when I have, you know, jumped into a company and I haven't been in that many companies. Well, I mean, a few before I really got serious about network marketing, but I based my decision on emotion, right? And like the hype. And so what I want to make sure that you don't do is don't rush the decision. Take the time to fully investigate the new company's credibility and the market potential before making a move. You know, you may, and we've actually made this mistake, um, you know, we jumped into a company, we thought they had all of the things necessary to build and to grow and to do the things we needed to do here in the United States. And it turns out they didn't have enough capital to do the things that they needed to do to build the U.S. market, right? So that kind of put us in a bind and our team's in a bind where like we're ready to run, but they are not ready for us to run. Does that make sense? So you want to make sure that you do the due diligence and I can... Um, attest that sometimes this takes a long time, right? So you may like hear about a company or want to make a change, but you've got to really investigate. Like you can go to the companies and you can ask the questions, you know, if you're going to work for these companies and, you know, be a distributor of the company, you need to know and be confident in the way the companies ran, how old it is, the, you know, the management, um, you know, the CEO, their, how much debt they have, um, you know, where their warehouses are, how the product is, is pushed out. Right. And it may seem like a huge move, but if you're going to make big waves in network marketing, you have to know this stuff, right? Like don't just jump in. Like Carrie said, you know, when you know better, you do better. So make sure you don't rush the decision and keep your emotions out of it. Look for facts and avoid relying solely on testimonials or the surface level hype, like we were talking about. And avoid making assumptions, right? You may see, maybe, maybe you, you know, go check out this company. You maybe you go to their event or something like that where you know you get a, a bigger picture of what's going on. And you know, all events are designed to be fun and have big energy and all those things, but it's kind of like putting um, lipstick on a pig. It's still a pig, right? So you wanna avoid making assumptions. So 
base your decisions on facts. That's like the number one thing. And sometimes you have to go, you know, up in the chain or, you know, get a hold of the corporate side or, you know, ask questions. Um, you know, it's really the only way you know. And of course, don't get stuck in this peril because this can also happen where you get stuck in you're like paralyzed. You're like, ah, oh, I don't know. There's too many, too many options, too many things. Do your due diligence and then make a decision, right? Like it could take six months to a year to find the right company. In fact, you know, it could take longer if you're really picky about what you're looking for. But make sure you do the, that due diligence for sure. Yeah. And, and, you know, thinking about a new company is really exciting. Um, you know, making it a switch, it can be really exciting for what is to come, but another thing to avoid and don't do is to over promise people, um, you know, over promise people you're bringing in, um, you know, and be over the top hypey. I, I get it, right. You're excited. It's this new thing. And you're having conversations with people that, you know, really be realistic, um, you know, avoid, you know, those unrealistic claims that, you know, again, you think it's what people are wanting to know and hear in order to say yes, right? We want you to be honest about, you know, what the new company can offer and, you know, what it is actually going to do for them and avoid, you know, being, again, over-promising, over-exaggerating, right? Because you're caught up in the emotion and the hype of, you know, the excitement of it. And we want you to be transparent about like, not everything is gonna be like sunshine and roses, right? So acknowledge that, you know, maybe there are some potential challenges or, or risks associated with a switch if you're having a conversation with somebody, with someone in your team, right? So acknowledge that and be totally transparent and be okay if, you know, because of that transparency, maybe they choose to not come right now, right? But it's so much better than like you over promising them coming in and then they have, um, you know, buyer's remorse. And then you have a team that came in because you over promised and now you have a team leaving as fast as, <laughs> as you brought them over. So <laughs> yeah. don't over promise, be realistic, be a hundred percent transparent with, with all of it right? You want people knowing that when they get in, like they're not caught in this like, oh, wait, what? You didn't tell me this stuff. So just be like real and transparent with your team. Absolutely. And let us know what, you, what you're getting away from this so far. Let us know what your biggest takeaways are so far. Um, another big don't is to disregard training and support. So making sure that that you know, you are fully aware of the company's products and systems and things that are already in place even before you even before you join. If you can find out, you know, what is in place. And then if once you do join, that you're fully trained on everything, that you know you know about the products, you know about the systems that are in place. Um, and you know about procedures, you know, before transitioning and then once you have transitioned as well. Um, and that you know um, and you have a good understanding of what support systems are going to be there for you and for people who follow you, okay? So that, so that you know that, that you are going to be fully supported and that, and that you know, t if, if people do follow you, if your team does follow you, um, that they're going to be supported too. The one big thing um, that we always teach um, at Beach Boss is to brand yourself and not to brand your company. And so if you have been branding yourself, your entire, you know, network marketing um, career, um, then people actually often will not know what company you're with. They might, they'll know that maybe you're in finance or you're in health and wellness or you're in or athleisure or whatever, whatever niche you're in, but they won't know the name of the company. Um, and you can you can then make an announcement saying, hey, you know, why what what you've done and 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 why you have decided to um, to change companies. But it's always vital to brand yourself and not brand your company, so that people are actually coming to you to ask a question. You know, I want to know I want to know where you, where you are. And I want to know the company. I want to know what the, these products are. Okay, um, and make sure that you spend the time building your personal brand. Okay, um, and don't underestimate um, the need, you know, 
it's not actually rebranding um, because you your your brand is you, your brand is you, and it's always you. Okay, and pe- that is why I said earlier that people have joined you. They've joined you. They they haven't actually probably joined your company, but they've joined you because they want to work with you. Um, and the company and the products are just are are a, a secondary um, factor. Nine times out of ten, people join people and people buy from people. Okay, so you know, make sure that that you you st- you stay clear on your branding and your branding is always you. Um, you know, and if your if your new company wants you to splash you know, all your products and all, all the new products and all the new everything all over social media. And that's the only way that you'll be able to operate. That might be a big red flag for you. Okay. If they are, if they are okay with you continuing to build the way that you've always built, you building influence on social media and branding yourself, then, then, then that's a green flag. Okay, and not a red flag. But if they, if, you know, it's, you do it our way or the highway, then maybe it's a conversation you want to have with with leadership. I hope that makes sense. All right, so switching companies and network marketing can be a strategic move if it's done thoughtfully and professionally. And by following some of these do's and don'ts, you can ensure a smoother transition and and set yourself and your team up for future success. And if you want to learn more about influence marketing and how you can build your business on social media using automation without being a silsy weirdo, then join our free online community with over 30,000 network marketers just like you. And you can find the link in the description below and we'll see you over there.